Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to take you through what is considered by many people to be one of the most complicated things to figure out in regards to JavaScript, and that is called regular expressions. What are regular expressions and why would you use them? Well, if you saw the event handler tutorial I had uh, just posted previously, you could see that one of the ways we use regular expressions is to validate form data. And I'm going to take you through that today. How you use a regular expression is to use a series of characters that state what you expect the data that is being analyzed to look like. Here are some examples. If you expected somebody to list a number of any type, you would state that in the regular expression by using the forward slash followed by the letter D. If you expected anyone to enter any type of white space character, you would state that in the regular expression by using the forward slash followed by the letter S. Regular expressions are used to verify that a visitor to your site entered a correct phone number or address or name or any data at all. You would use a regular expression to state, in this example, that the phone number is correct. First off, you would want the data entered to contain at least seven digits, and here's an example. It may have different symbols interspersed with these numbers, and you would want to allow for that, and also it may be preceded by additional numbers. Here is your first regular expression that we'll go through. What exactly does this strange set of characters mean? Well, the forward slashes surround the regular expression. The caret symbol signifies that the letters that precede it will start the value you are looking for. Then, this bit of code signifies that you expect the user to type between one and six digits. And finally, the dollar sign means that the value should end at this point. Now I'm gonna take you through a function that will analyze any regular expression that is thrown to it. The function is named edit node text, and what it accepts as variables is the regular expression I'm going to test for, the identification number associated with the text box node, and if you don't know what that means, check out my previous tutorial, the identification number for the text I will be changing, and the text I will be adding to the helper text node. Here, in the highlighted text in black, I'm asking function test to check if the text located in the node with the identification name input is valid. Here, if the text is not valid, I check if helper text is empty, meaning that the text in the helper text node is empty. If it is empty, I place the helper message in that node with the append child function. If the right information was entered, however, I clear the helper text message. Here is the div definition that I've created back in my HTML code. When a visitor clicks out of the text field, the is the field empty function is called. This is the HTML page from my previous tutorial where I talk about event handlers. As you can see here, when a person leaves this text field, all of these functions are triggered. So, for example, one of the requirements of this web page is that some value be entered. So, in leaving without entering any value, you can see here, helper text pops up. So, this is an example of how these functions are being triggered. Each of these areas of the web page are associated with different div files. And if that doesn't make any sense, check out the HTML tutorial. And whenever people do not enter the proper information into these text boxes, that is whenever these functions that I'm talking about right now are triggered. As you can see here, whenever an on blur event handler is triggered, the is the field empty function is fired. And what is it passed? It's passed the value of the text area, and it's also passed an identification name for the helper text, which I'm going to be changing. This function will be called to test if a text field node is empty, and it accepts the value in the text box and the helper text identification number, which was just passed to it. Here you see your second regular expression being forward slash dot operator plus sign and another forward slash. It is requiring that the value contained in the text field be, first off with the dot operator, any character number or a symbol, and with the plus operator that there is one or more occurrences of the value that precedes it, meaning that there is something entered into this text field, be it a number, a character, or a symbol, and there can be one of these different types of values, or there can be many. So that's what that regular expression expresses. Here is a function that will test if a valid address is entered. Here we can see that the first value entered is expected to be between 1 and
and six digits in length with the backslash followed by the letter S. We expect there to be white space of any kind. Then there will be a word that is between three and 16 characters in length. Then we expect an additional white space character. Then we expect another word between two and eight characters long. So we would expect street, avenue, a word like that to be entered. And then with the backslash, letter W, star, and then the dollar sign, then we expect that there may be additional words that could be of any number of additional characters. Here we are checking to see if the state code that they entered is okay. It is asking if the value entered starts with an A, C, D, F, G, H, etc. And it is doing that through the use of the OR symbol. If it does start with one of those letters, then it is asking if the letter that precedes it is one of the characters that is contained within the brackets. If it is, then it's considered a valid state code. Here we're checking to see if the phone number is okay. The question marks says to match zero or one occurrences of the item that precedes it, and that item is expected to be either a digit between zero and nine. Then the next code means you can consider the number valid if it starts with any number of numbers between zero and nine that are followed by the dash symbol. But this is not a requirement. This covers if someone enters an international code in their phone number, which isn't very common. Then the last series of characters means the person can then enter three digits using the numbers zero through nine, but they don't need to. This would be, for example, an area code. The next series of characters state that if they didn't enter those characters, it is okay to enter a three digit number between zero and nine and follow that with a dash or not. This would be the prefix of the number. For example, if this is the number 828320, 828 would be the prefix. Next series of code means you expect them to enter a four digit number using the digits zero through nine. And finally, to end the regular expression, if none of the other checks passed your tests, you will simply accept seven of any number or character, uppercase or lowercase. Here we're checking to see if the email that was entered is okay. First series of code means the email will start out with any number of numbers or letters, uppercase or lowercase. Next series of code states that it is valid to use the symbols that proceed there or a dash in the email address, or it is perfectly valid to not use any of those symbols. Of course, if we are checking to see if an email address is valid, we are definitely going to require that the at symbol be located in it somewhere. And then this series of code states that the at sign will be followed by one or more numbers or characters, uppercase or lowercase. Then it is valid to use the symbols that we have here being a period and so forth, number or character, uppercase or lower. And of course, it is not a requirement to use any of those symbols. And finally, we end the regular expression by stating that the email address is expected to end with a period followed by two or more of any character, uppercase or lowercase. In this case, it would be .org, .net, .com, etc. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about regular expressions. If you didn't quite get it, just watch the video again. It'll all sink in and you might want to pause the screen and read over all the information that I contained in the presentation. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.